Superman number nine, written by Keith Giffen and Dan Jurgens, art also by Dan Jurgens. Um, last issue we dealt with Hellspont, and genuinely none of that comes back, so just forget all of it. This issue picks up in the Bering Strait, where Superman has gotten word that a Russian nuclear submarine has gotten itself trapped underwater, and he's going to go and save the day because Superman knows no country. And he goes in and he, he just does some x-ray stuff and he sees that the hull is breached and the they're trying to plug up all the leaks and whatnot. So Superman goes up to where this giant scratch in the hull is. He visions it up, welds it back together and says like, all right, cool. We cut to the people inside the sub and while they're happy Superman is rescuing them, they're also like, I hope he doesn't know what's on this submarine. And one of the other ones is like, hopefully he just saves us and leaves. So Superman, seemingly not hearing any of this in Russian, he he's like, all right, I got to knock out this underwater cliff in order to save these guys. He punches some rocks. The sub starts like tanking down towards the bottom of the ocean because it took on so much water. So he s swings down underneath, picks it up and brings it back up to the surface. And he's about to pry off the top of the submarine when we cut to... Uh, PGN, which is where Lois Lane works, in case you completely forgot about that like I did. And some guy shows up named Mr. Barnes. I don't know if he has a first name. But um, he's basically walking in saying, like, Superman has a secret identity and I have irrefutable proof of it. And Lois is like, why would Superman need a secret identity? He's Superman. Why would he try to live as a human? It's like... Because he's an alien and he's trying to understand our culture. And that's what better way to do that than to assimilate. And Lois is like, all right, fine. What's this unassailable proof that you've got? And he's like, I'll tell you for money. And Lois is like, all right, well, that's dumb and I don't believe you. Go back to your blogs, kitty. So he, he kicks him out of the office. Jimmy steps in and basically just expands on the scene where Lois is like, well, Maybe he's right. Maybe it is. And then Jimmy's like, Psh, there's no way that Superman would have a nine to five job. Man, if, if I had powers like that, I'd be living like a king. So then we cut back to Superman because why not? And he's about to open up the like top of the submarine to help people out. And then there's already two officers from an upper hatch. And he's they're just like, excuse me, stop. And he's like, I'm saving your your men. I thought they were drowning. He's like, yeah, but they're not. We we know what we're doing. Please stop. Otherwise, um, there'll be trouble. And Superman sees there's like military helicopters nearby. He's like, this is how you politely ask for me to stop? And they're like, yep, we politely ask with force. Leave. And he's like, all right, whatever, bye. So he starts to fly off and he's like, okay, whatever. I, I don't want to get too paranoid or whatever. But there were a lot of lead-lined, like, holes in that submarine that's a bit weird so then we cut to metropolis national bank where this weird lady doesn't have a name is just like hey give me the key to this vault as she's threatening some random ass guy and he's like i don't i don't have the key i can't get in the vault and she's like Psh, you're useless and she just punches her way into a safety deposit box and steals a locket that apparently belonged to her and her father may have stolen from her and her father doesn't like care about her anymore she speaks in like m like facebook status updates from a 13 year old girl where it's like it's not like he'll notice it's missing i mean he stopped noticing anything to do with me years ago like that sort of stuff so she goes out police try to fire a shot at her when she refuses to give it up and the bullet just phases right through her can't touch her shoots a guy behind her and then she just punches the police officer like all the way across the bank. So then we cut to the Barnes guy who's chewing himself out for blowing that meeting with Lois Lane. And then he sees that Superman was just at the Bering Strait. And he's like, oh, that means he's going to be coming back here soon. Maybe I can get a picture. And he goes down an alley next to the Daily Planet. And he, we see someone in there, like, getting their clothing adjusted. And he's like, of course, now I can get a picture. Come on, just show me that cape. And he takes some pictures of whoever was in this alley. And he's like, of course, now I can use this photo evidence to back up the goods. So then we see Clark, who's returned from the Bering Strait. And he's got a bunch of missed texts from Lois and Jimmy. And as he gets up to the office, Lois just starts chewing him out. And he's like, um, excuse me, I was working on a story. And she's like, that's why you forgot my sister at the train station. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a plot. 
And so she chews out Clark for a little bit, and Clark's like, I didn't agree to that. When did I agree to that? That was not something I said I'd do. So she's like, all right, whatever. You can make it up to us by uh, buying us dinner tonight. We're going to this super high-class Italian place that costs so much money. You can cover the check. Bye. And so as she's walking away, uh, Jimmy gets the notification that there was a bank robbery in plain daylight. So Clark runs out again. And then we get the scene where Barnes is talking to... I'm forgetting his name, Mr. Edge, that's it, uh, who's in charge of the whole network, and he, he presents his new evidence, and he's like, yeah, Lois threw me out of the office without even looking at my evidence. She's crazy, I tell you. Anyway, I'd like to run this on one of your networks, and he's like, and you're willing to go on camera and attach your name to this? And he, she's like, yep. And he's like, all right, cool, let's put it on TV. So Superman arrives, tries to beat up the girl who's stealing the lockets. Of course, punches go right through her, but she's able to, land a hit on Superman and actually ends up hurting him a little bit. So then he tries some heat vision, hoping that'll do something. It doesn't. It goes right through her. And as this fight is continuing on, the news report breaks out on, like, the equivalent of their Times Square, like, billboards in the back. And it's basically just saying, like, we now have a, a, a suspected person of who truly is the Man of Steel. And then we get this clip of this very square-jawed man stepping out of an elevator, and everyone's staring him down. They're like... His name is Spence Becker, and they're like, oh, my God, it's you, Spence. What are you doing here, man? And they're like, he's like, whoa, what's going on, guys? And they direct him over to a computer where this uh, guy has managed to come to the conclusion that Spence Becker is Superman. And we see that the person he was taking pictures of was Spence Becker. He was getting his clothes back on for some reason we're not aware of yet. Um and he uses the excuse that the mild inconsistencies between facial structure can be explained by a power that Superman likes to keep to himself so that nobody knows he has it. And so, it's, yeah, they just go on about that and they say how he has a wife and a kid. And then as soon as they say that, the um, girl who was stealing stuff was from the bank was like, oh, you're a dad? Now I have double the issues. And that's where we leave off. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't feel like I could have possibly predicted this was coming. This is just a totally different plot, 100%. And it's like four plots in one. We get the identity reveal thing. We get the Russian sub thing. We get this girl from the bank thing. And I guess tied in with the identity reveal thing, we got it split up into the blogger guy and then this Spencer Beck guy. So, or Spence Becker. It's jumbled. It's kind of a mess. I like... I think the only thing I can really say I like is the characters' voices. Nobody's so serious all the time. They actually are having fun with themselves, and I like that more than I did, like, the first arc where it was just like, my God, everything is awful and terrible, and how can I possibly go on? Like, no, this is just them having some fun. It took some time for me to get used to it, but now I am, and I like it more. So, art-wise, it's okay. It's not the best. I'm not the biggest fan of just the way that like shadow is done on this but it's fine overall i'm gonna give it like a i'm giving it a six it's just fine it's not great but it's not bottom of the pack either it's just a okay this is a superman story we're doing now and i guess we'll see if it wraps up next issue mm -hmm.